Here we are at the Clean Tech and Technology Metal Summit at the King Edward Hotel in Toronto. Our guest is Mark Thompson. Thanks, Peter. How's the flight? Good, good, pretty short. Yeah. I've been interested in talking with you since I saw you were on the list. Tolga's been up to a very lot over the past year. Yeah, we're starting to hit some straps on our graphene developments and uh, some of the other things we've had in the background, like the cobalt, is starting to come into its own, of course. So let's do big picture. You have your own deposits and you have your own R&D departments and you have your own end users that you're targeting, yep. your sales department. So yep. tell us about your deposits first. Uh, so the deposits, so we've got about 25 deposits, three are at JORC resource status, and, um, and one of them, our flagship project, has got an uh, average grade of 25.5%. Uh, these are in North Sweden. That's graphite. That's graph yeah, graphitic carbon for graphite. So that's uh, in North Sweden. And then about uh, a couple of years ago, we set up a test plant because we've got a really different way of processing the ore. So we've uh, got a, a pilot plant basically running down in Germany to make materials and scale up the process. You mean you have a different kind of processing technology? Yeah, so we actually cut the ore. So we don't drill and blast. We actually cut the ore out into blocks, which are, are because our ore is so conductive straight out of the ground, it's like an electrode. Mm -hmm. So we actually use electricity to break the ore down to atoms rather than crushing and grinding. Okay. So uh, obviously it's a bit, you know, fairly new to scale up. Normally there's lots of electrode processes, but normally you're... You're, you're keeping them going, you're not destroying them. So anyway, we're, we're doing that. We've tri been trial mining for two years and we've been processing material and on a bigger scale. And about mid last year, we announced a product development strategy, which is we've started a team in the UK uh, of scientists, uh, chief technology officer um, and battery related guys to take the material to a prototype stage. So that's the second part of the company then is the R&D. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit more than R&D. We actually, so we're actually creating the products uh, ourselves. We'll, uh, we've got a process, a strategy behind that. And then we take the prototype product to the companies to do deals with. So we've recently announced deals with groups like uh, BSF subsidiary called Shemital, uh, previously uh, with Tata. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, so we're vertically integrated now from the deposit, the processing, and now the, the graphene-based products as well. Right. Tolga recently had a press release involving, I think it was some concrete testing. Yeah. Tell yeah. us about that. So we like, we like concrete. It's a big volume market and we're potentially the world's largest producer of graphene ultimately. So uh, uh, we can affect concrete quite a lot with a very small amount of graphene. We've just announced results where we can make it up concrete up to 26% stronger in flexibility strength. For the, at the same mass? Uh, yeah, well, then you can reduce mass if you like. So that's one of the sort of clean tech sides of, of that is if you make concrete stronger, you can have less of it to do the same job, for example. And you still need rebar? Uh, no, you can skip rebar depending on the, the application. And then you'll avoid the concrete cancer and stuff like that. So What's the next step with that process? Uh, well, we've just announced the strength results where we improve the strength. Uh, we've also announced that we've made it thermally conductive. Concrete is normally an insulator. So we've actually got it to you know, um, basically dissipate heat so it can be used for underground power cables, things like that. And then the last step of that is we're doing work on electrically conductive concrete, which is to make the concrete like a big solid state underfloor heating unit. So for your underfloor so, heating... Say, say that again, that was neat. Oh, well, your concrete normally is an insulator, right? But it's a, it's, it's a cheap product, it, it's very flowable, it's a big, one of the largest materials in the world. But if you actually make it electrically conductive, it becomes like a big heating element. So you can run a weak electric current through it and heat, it, heat the ground up. So your airport aprons, you won't be snowed in again. Your bridges that you want snow free or ice free, you'll be able to warm them up electrically and therefore uh, you don't have to dump salt on them and they can just sit just above uh, freezing temperature all year round depending on where, where you live. And this is coming out of Tolga? Yeah, so we've already done the thermal, the thermal side of it, now we're just working on the electrical side. And uh, so you've currently got underfloor like driveway heating and stuff, right? Yes. But it's, it's, it's a bit expensive, but you've got water pipes or gas pipes or you've got electric, electrics. In the electrics, the copper cable rusts and cause problems. In the other piping, it's maintenance. It's, it's not, not maintenance-free. Um, there's a lot of expense if it breaks up, and they don't work that well. So by making the concrete entirely one heatable mass from itself, just through running a weak current through it, then you have uh, possibly a large take-up of, of graphene into that product. I'd never heard of that before. 
Yeah, fun. you've actually got a bridge in North America. You've got bridges that use graphite and bits of steel yeah. and stuff, but the steel rusts and the graphite actually then makes the concrete weaker. So then you have other issues. We actually are making the concrete stronger, more thermally conductive and electrically conductive all in the one go. And that should crack open that market really well. So yeah, we like it. Now you mentioned earlier you have 25 deposits. Some of them are gold, and I understand you've been able to be a project generator with those. Yeah, with uh, the gold projects uh, in Australia, we've been able to be uh, selling off to, to raise some revenue over the last couple of years. The last project is under option now, um, so that's on its way out. And then separate to that, we've got these um, Sweden's most significant cobalt deposits, um, which, of course, four or five years ago, um, we really liked having in the company and did a bit of work on them. But now with cobalt prices north of 50 odd thousand dollars a tonne, They've really come into their own, and late so last 50, year, fifty-four thousand as of Friday. Exactly. So, and it's not really going down in a hurry, is it? So, no. once it's gone up, but it's. it's I don't it's know if you saw this piece of news, but uh, there's been Ebola discovered in parts of the Congo again. Yeah. There's another outbreak, and the poor Congolese are going to be suffering more, which has upwards pressure on the price of cobalt. It it does, and uh, having a, a a nice jurisdiction like Scandinavia for supply, it offers a really clean supply chain. Plus, Sweden's got hydroelectric power. So you have this very low CO2 input into making your products there. Right. Um, there's new battery plants being built, not only in Eastern Europe, but also in Scandinavia as well. Some ex-Tesla employees have announced that they want to build a 35 gigawatt uh, factory um, uh, for batteries for lithium ion in, in Sweden or Finland. There's already so, a company processing cobalt and cobalt oxides in Scandinavia, right? Yeah, actually before really pre-Africa, most of the cobalt was coming from the Finnish smelters anyway. So you've also got the largest scrap recycling in Europe, pulling uh, things like cobalt and tellurium and gold out of scrap metals, in, which is south of us in Sweden. So yeah, it's already a bit of a hotspot for that. The infrastructure is fantastic for it. So um, what, what should we look for over the next quarter, six months, year from Talga? Uh, well, a heap more development, I guess, of our current products, but mostly it's the commercial phase. So we've taken these graph graphene products in four sectors, the, the concrete for construction, batteries, carbon fibre composites, plastics, um, and also paints and coatings. So they're starting to commercialise now where we do development deals with, with companies, and that puts us into first revenue, even during the pilot plant uh, sort of phase. So uh, it'll be a continuation and expansion of that. So there'll be new products. There'll be new deals, and uh, yeah, that should stack up to people then uh, reevaluating us even further. It'll be an exciting year. Yeah, it is. It is it always. Uh, I, I don't think you could look back on the last few years and see that we were dragging our feet. Thanks for coming. No worries. Thanks, Peter.